I don't know what to answer when it comes to the settlements. I'm embarrassed by the settlements, given what I know about them. What do you answer to people when they throw the settlements at Israel? I I mean, I don't want to take away people's judgment, what they think they think. I can tell you what most Israelis think. Um, Most Israelis distinguish between several different kinds of settlements. And two of the, let's say, three kinds um, are not an obstacle to peace, and the Israelis don't care about them. Uh, the vast majority of settlers live within three to 5,000 feet of the Green Line. I mean, the, the two biggest settlements, there are, let's say, 130 settlements. These things, that's the way they're kind of counted. Um, out of those 130, exactly two of them contain a quarter of all Israelis living over the Green Line. And they're both vast and um, incredibly young Haredi, ultra-Orthodox cities. And they're both within 2,000 feet of the Green Line. And so are they... a problem for peace I, we can't just exchange a couple of kilometers square kilometers in the north of the gilboa area or in the south or you know that most israelis sort of write that off some of the settlement stuff israelis in principle don't care about i mean just are deeply opposed to the idea that it's a settlement for example the kotel is a settlement the western wall is a by the international reckoning of the ceasefire line of 1949 which is how this thing is decided a settlement. Well, if the holiest place in Judaism is a settlement, you can go jump in a lake, dear world, right? If you if you visit the old city of Jerusalem, which I urge everyone on earth to do, um, and talk to Palestinians there, not just the Jews. When you visit the old city of Jerusalem, you'll see something astonishing. The Jewish quarter is much more beautiful than the Muslim, Armenian, or Christian quarters. Not beautiful in the sense that there's ancient wonders in all the other quarters. But the Jewish quarter is very spacious. There's public Wi-Fi. There's good plumbing. There are new buildings. Why? Because when the Jordanians ruled Jerusalem for 19 years, they demolished everything in the Jewish quarter, including medieval synagogues. So I don't care if you think it's a settlement. Nothing Jewish will survive if Israel abandons it, so I'm going to hold on to the old city or the Temple Mount. Only, only because, only because I'm worried about your time. I want to, uh, I, I, the, 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 the bad stuff where the where the settlers stomp on olive trees and probably a quarter of the settlement movement is an ideological religious movement that um, intentionally placed uh, dozens of, of, of specific locations in between Palestinian population centers to prevent the formation of a Palestinian state. And um, I um, think that a lot of what happens there is very troubling. I, I'm a little bit of a secret lefty. Don't tell anybody. Um, my name is signed on a Supreme Court petition against you know the, an attempt to oust one particular Bedouin village uh, in the West Bank. I mean, uh, my dad was the chairman of Rabbis for Human Rights. Um, I'm sitting here showing my left wing credentials um, just to say it's not that I disagree. It's that it's much more. If I tell you who I vote for, I'll be telling you the single least interesting thing to tell you. But what most Israelis understand is that there are pieces of the settlement movement that uh, that that hamper a possible deal not that they, they need to think a deal is possible to worry about that but those who do think a deal is possible make this distinction as well and there's huge amounts most of the settlement movement that does not and some of it that is just not they're not willing to give up no matter what the world thinks and so there are these distinctions there are these gradations if the world doesn't see those gradations it's going to have trouble talking to israelis and if the world focuses on that problem there are actually violent, radical, deeply racist sections of uh, that religious settlement movement that I don't think is a majority of the very far-right religious part of that religious movement. But nevertheless, it is big enough, if it's a few hundred people, it's a few hundred people that for political reasons is very hard to crack down on and have terribly embarrassed and shamed Israel. And by the way, um, attack the Israeli army routinely. Um, and even talk about attacking Palestinians as a way to get back at a an, a left-wing Israel that they feel has betrayed them. And so it's this group that is deeply unhealthy, deeply violent, and I think any blame leveled at our government for failing to crack down on them is totally legitimate blame. Uh, by the way, for Palestinians, just to say this is really also important, for Palestinians, settlements are the great signal of Israeli intention. In other words, we Israelis have been sort of testing Palestinian intentions for 30 years and concluded that they don't intend us well and can't sign a peace deal. Palestinians have that same narrative arc, but they point to settlements. And they say, you talk and talk and talk, you keep voting for peace, blah, blah, blah. 
not always, but certainly quite a few times, accept settlements. So that's how I know it's all a lie from your end. And so it's a huge question. 